Ansible is an open source configuration management tool that allows you to implement infrastructure as code. It can also be called as infrastructure as code automation engine that helps you automate provisioning software, applying configurations, managing configurations, deploying applications. This had been included in Fedora distribution of Linux and now is available for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, CentOS and Scientific Linux via extra packages for Enterprise Linux. Red Hat acquired Ansible in the year 2015 October. Ansible can deploy to various virtualization and cloud environments including your Amazon Web Services, Atomic, CenturyLink, CloudScale, CloudStack, DigitalOcean, Dimension Data, Docker, Google Cloud Platform, KVM, Linode, LXC, LXD, Microsoft Azure, OpenStack, OVH, Overt, Packet, ProfitBricks, PubNub, Rackspace, SmartOS, SoftLayer, Univention, VMware, WebFaction, and Zen Server, and of course your bare metal hosts. The design goals of Ansible are as a software configuration management tool should be minimal in nature, should be consistent every time you want to deploy a software or manage configuration of your server or your hardware. Of course, it has to be highly secure and certainly it has to be reliable it has to work whenever you want the way you want it to work it should be easy to learn there shouldn't be a huge learning curve learning a software that manages your configuration and it should use open ssh it should not deploy agents to nodes and ansible playbook can be unchanged to prevent unexpected side effects on the various managed systems. The Ansible playbooks use an easy and descriptive language based on YML and Jinja templates. The management system should not impose additional dependencies on the environment. Now let's take a look at the architecture of Ansible. Ansible can have two different types of servers, your controlling machines and your nodes. Your controlling machines have to be a Linux or a Unix hosted environment and should have Python 2.6 or 2.7 on that and your managed nodes which are like Unix must have version 2.4 of Python or later. All your managed nodes with Python 2.4 or earlier versions of Python simple JSON package is also required for those to work with Ansible. Since the version 1.7 of Ansible you can also manage various Windows nodes and in this case your PowerShell remoting is used instead of SSH which you would use in case of Linux. Ansible uses an agentless architecture and with the agent based architectures nodes must run as background processes as daemons installed locally on various nodes that continuously communicate with a controlling machine and in case of an agentless architectures node do not need to run as background daemons all the time to connect with a controlling machine which is what ansible uses this in a way reduces the overhead on the network by preventing the nodes from continuously polling the controlling machine all the time here is a diagram showing the architecture of Ansible. So in this case the orchestration begins with a single controlling machine and you can see various nodes on your right hand side that are managed by a controlling machine the provisional machine that you see in the middle and all the connections are being made over SSH to your application servers to your database servers to your web servers to, to orchestrate the nodes Ansible deploys modules to nodes over SSH and modules are stored in nodes and communicate with the controlling machine through JSON protocol. So your various nodes do not keep checking with the controlling machine 
if there is an update. Instead, the controlling machine, whenever there is an update, pushes these updates to all the nodes that are connected to it. Hey, want to become an expert in cloud computing? Then subscribe to Simply Learn's channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in cloud computing, click here.